Hello YouTube, welcome back to another training session. <laughs> we're going to do it slightly different today. Um, we're going to do some little informative bits about things just to make you a better athlete. Um, if you are obviously a competitive bodybuilder, most things that are obviously about being an athlete, they can cross translate to any sport. So if they help you for this type of sport, they will help for any sport. So we will go through all those different things throughout. I'm not gonna tell you what they are, just because then you may stay around and actually watch the remainder of the video if I don't tell you. So we will get stuck into the session. Normal leg session, it is my squat session on the Smith machine. Um, one slight movement that we've changed from a split squat to an RDL. Um, we're gonna do a split squat on the other session instead, just so that we can have a couple of variations of a hip hinge again, just because where my physique lacks is obviously what a hip hinge will bring to the table. So that is why there is more, more than one. When I go back into a push phase, because I'm currently quite heavily into a diet phase, I will change this movement from a dumbbell RDL over to an SLDL, just when I've got a little bit more meat to meet and once I can actually take the heavy poundages again with an SLDL, uh, just because I've already got a heavy hip hinge in my um, kind of 10 day rotation. So adding another one right now when I'm a little bit leaner would probably be a little bit silly. So we'll make those changes once we go into a surplus. First exercise is um, adductor, so we'll go through that. Second exercise is flying hamstring curl. Obviously, as you can see, these are pretty much the same movements that I've always started with on this quad focus day. Both of these movements obviously allow for my knees to get warm without my quads getting fatigued. I don't utilize a leg extension or before something like my squats because I'm not really that strong on squats that I need to pre-fatigue my quads. If my knees are feeling a little bit niggly, then that's probably when I'll go in with something like that. But Right now, everything seems to be all okay.
Two reps, two reps. Yep, 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 all the way through. two reps left in me. <laughs> it's become a, a fad to really bring your chest up off the pad when you do a lying hamstring curl. I mean, there are some machines that are very shit that potentially you do need to do that for it to feel more like a hamstring curl rather than a, a leg extension. But for the most part, most of them, the chest pad is where it needs to be for a reason. Stop trying to make it super complicated. Keep your core locked tight, keep your chest into that pad and really just get to work on driving and dragging those heels over whilst making sure that you keep those hips. I'm not gonna stay completely still because they will move a little bit, but into the pads. One of the main things when you're a competitive bodybuilder or anyone within sport, the best way to set yourself up for success when it comes to adherence is organising your day effectively. I'm going to break that down into a few different things. So, first of all, we'll start with the morning routine. Setting yourself up with a good, productive morning routine will allow you to be able to set yourself up for the day for that to carry on over. The better you can set yourself up, the better your day will be. So for me personally, I get up out of bed, no snooze alarm. I get my drink, I sit down, I walk, the, I walk the dogs, I do my work, I then go and have my breakfast, and that is literally every single morning. Everybody can wake up at a time that they can have a morning routine that sets them up for whatever it may, whatever they're about to do. For me personally, that is what works for me, but you need to figure out one that works for you. That will set you up for a really good day and we'll go on to the next thing next.
All too far up, so then you like it goes over, it's like slides you up. I don't want it sliding you up, I want it to be a straight line here. What can you pull it a bit? It's fine, yeah. I literally want it to be a straight line, that's it. Yeah, right, that's it. Horse gear and drive up. Think about curling your pelvis through the fucking ceiling. Think about curling your pelvis through the ceiling. Yes. <laughs> Let's try it, come on. Yes. Keep your knees in, keep your knees in. Drive through for the glutes, come on. Ribcage top, core tight. Shorter range of motion. Pause now and drive through. Keep your spine rigid, keep your spine rigid. Drive through all the way. Yes, come on. And rack, well done. It's not on. Right guys, so, key points for a barbell hip thrust or a hip thrust machine. Make sure that your joints are stacked. So, what I want to see here is your knee directly above your heel, making sure that your shins remain in a vertical position all the way through. If your shins start travelling back towards you, your quads will inevitably do some of the work. You want to isolate your glutes completely here. So your shins remain vertical, you work in the range of motion that allows you to come down as far as possible without your knees travelling towards you. Now secondly, you have to keep your posture. Spine has to remain rigid like a pole. So, Doing that will allow you to completely, completely allow that hip shift to happen. So, core remains braced, chin remains tucked, not here, here, to maintain a neutral spine. If you go here, you're completely blocking airways. Keep your chin tucked here so your spine remains neutral. Core braced, and then I don't want no flexion and extension like this. This stays locked in. You drop your hips back and down, and then think about curling your pelvis, driving your pelvis through, and curling it through, think about driving your pelvis into the ceiling and through. That way, you will be able to get the most out of your hip thrust. One of the biggest things and most important things is organisation. I make it sound so simple. Lots of people do find it difficult. It is a work in progress. Don't expect yourself to be non-organised and then all of a sudden be Mrs or Mr Organised. You have to take your time to be able to get there because, like anything, you get better at it over time. But with organisation as a bodybuilder, have you prepared your meals for your day? Do you know what time you need to be at work? What time you're going to have a break? What, what happens if I have a break that's 10 minutes later? Does that mean that I then need to adjust my meal times? It's about being able to have everything with you at all times to make sure that if anything does go wrong, that it doesn't matter if you've gone in a journey you're delayed by three hours it doesn't matter you've got all your meals so you're still able to do everything that you need to do it doesn't mean that everything every single day has to be the same because we're human we're not robots things may happen that slightly veers away from what our normal schedule would be which is why i've not said schedule but if you are organized you will make sure that everything gets done in your day and you will able to you will be able to be super adherent all that will do is that will improve your focus. That's it, that's it. I don't think daily cardio will do this. I don't think daily will do this. But the way we train it, it's free. It's time to leave some kind of class. Come on, make strong. Stiff a leg, stiff a leg. Yes. 
Big shift, big hip shift, big hip shift. Big hip shift, come on. Yes, body ball. just seen the new order of my session slash new edition of exercise so we're going to go smith machine squats into hip thrusts straight into rdls and then onto leg press so obviously the smith machine will hit my quads a lot the glute drive will obviously hit my glutes and obviously a little bit of adductor and hamstring as well and then the RDLs will obviously hit my glutes, adductors and hamstrings too, into then a leg press which I'm aiming to get as much knee flexion as I possibly can. Obviously my knee flexion compared to most people's is a little bit less um, because of my terrible knees. So don't always do what someone does on Instagram if you like them. Obviously my legs have been able to grow that way, um, but for the most people they weren't. My, my legs and my quads are obviously a part that I am a little bit more blessed with compared to the rest of my body. Um, I do still work incredibly hard, but that is um, the order of my session. I quite like the snatch bar RDLs. It's a lot heavier than a normal um, hex bar. It's a, it's a prime hex bar. It is very heavy. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to drive up the weight on that. Um, but it's a, a good start point, especially after just doing the hip thrusts and the um, Smith Machine squats as well. As a competitive bodybuilder, the way in which you macro track needs to be different to someone who's not a competitive bodybuilder. Someone who is just trying to lead a healthy and fit lifestyle can have a balance of all different foods. When it comes to being a competitive bodybuilder, you do need to stick to whole foods. If you were utilizing a Ferrari as your car, you would not put basic standard petrol in it. You would put your premium in. When you are a competitive bodybuilder trying to build a premium physique, you want to make sure that your body is getting fueled by the best sources. When it comes to your proteins, carbohydrates, fat sources because if you're not fueling it with great sources of fuel how can you expect it to perform in the way that you want it to how can you expect it to look the way that you want it to some genetically people may be able to get away with macro tracking not in a sense of sticking to whole foods but unfortunately for 99 percent of the population as you as a competitive bodybuilder you do need to stick to whole foods if you do want to get the most out of your competitive journey if you are the type of person that doesn't stick to whole foods even when you are swapping and changing for like for like sources which is fine if you're not consistent with that approach you will find that towards the back end of prep you're the type of person that struggles to get that last little bit of condition your calories will have to go really low your expenditure will have to go really high to dig for that. So if you are that type of person, try and bring it back to proper basics and you'll find that you'll actually be able to achieve that next level of condition in a really good way. Work, work. Drive, 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 drive. Perfect, that. Oh.
Did you notice anything? No. I bought my deck myself in Cuba. Went to Bio Accelerator out in Medellin in Colombia and we had stem cells. Cuba just had it IV. I had my knees, my hair and intravenous as well. I haven't really noticed anything in my hair. Um, I have seen improved recovery. My sleep is way better. You can see that all through my aura ring data. And I hadn't really noticed anything different in my knees up until the last two days. So I used to really struggle to go down steps and I can go downstairs now pain-free, um, even really steep stairs. I've just done my leg press. That is the deepest that I've ever been able to take my knees since finishing my diving career. So that's improved. And I did my squats without any pain into my knees. So, I mean, that's just one session. We'll see over the course of the next month what happens. And obviously we have been back now for five weeks, I think, four or five weeks. Um, so, so far, so good. Hopefully it continues and continues to get better over time as well. off-plan eating. As bodybuilders, most people do get it pretty wrong. Obviously, when you're a normal person, someone would obviously not eat all of their normal calories or normally what they'd eat in a day. They would obviously take away a normal meal and go out for a meal and not see much body weight gain. They'd eat as a normal person. The same needs to apply if you are a competitive bodybuilder. You have a lot of calories in your day. So when it comes to an off-plan meal, what you need to do is take away some calories to be able to stick to that amount of calories when you go out for an off plan meal, not to see the body weight rise. The idea is to spend time with family or friends and socialize. It's not to overeat and gain weight. I'm done. So that is the end of my leg session. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Currently, I am in a diet phase. I have dropped around six kilos so far. Looking to drop another four kilos, so that's 10 kilos in total. Um, obviously, just to get a little bit leaner, because then I've got another 20 weeks worth of pushing before a reset phase, before we then decide on whether we are gonna prep then or prep a little bit later into next year. Obviously, all depends on the look, all depends on whether we think that I'm big enough um, and all depends on whether we think we could be competitive. We can never dictate who's going to be on the day, but we can focus on bringing our best and making sure I have enough muscle tissue for the class that I want to do.